to need to do this tutorial or some wine corks doesn't matter if they're rubber um, or they're really cork um, so either one will work and then you'll need the measuring cup and we're going to mix our resin in here and then we're also going to end up dipping our corks into that and then you're going to need this casting resin um, the amazing casting resin that cures in five minutes so it's the quick setting kind and then I'm going to add some colorant to it because I want to I wanted to make it look like maybe some hot wax or some beeswax or just uh, caramel something that's going to be um, a little natural or neutral color and then I'm going to add my bling and it'll pop pretty nicely so I chose this brown dye that I uh, it ordered in some of my teaching supplies and I thought well, I'll try this out since I haven't really done much with this brown yet so we'll see how that goes you'll need a baggie or some plastic wrap to um, set your corks on when you're finished dipping them and, and then some extra molds from the amazing old rubber if you have other kind of molds to um, pour the rest of the resin into so you don't waste any of it because we're not going to use very much today for these three corks um, and I like to at least put a 10 cc and a 10 cc uh, part A and part B in the mixing cup when I'm using a drop of colorant or two so um, so there'll be some left over and we can pour that in the mold look how dark that is that's part A and that's one drop of that brown dye so it's really chocolatey okay and you mix uh, the colorant always up in part A first and make sure it's thoroughly mixed before adding part B but um, what I lied about is I'm not going to do 10 C's and 10 CC's of part A and B I'm just going to do five so I'm going to do five of A and then five of B and then come back uh, and see what happens with that. Since it's just one drop of the colorant, I don't think that'll affect the curing process. That little bit of my finger, my thumb, I had done some of this before and I got some on my thumb, so the thumb's really colored. Uh, so I'm going to take my um, um, cork, and it doesn't really matter um, which one I start with first, and I'm going to dip the end in. I'm going to do the, if there is a, a bigger end or a fatter end, I'm going to dip that in, and um, then the skinnier or thinner end, it'll be at the bottom. So here I go, that's one, and then I'm just going to flip that over like that, and that's two, just dip it in there, flip that over like that. You might want to wear gloves when you do do this, and then three, you can leave some of the excess drip into the cup. And then I have my extra molds here standing by, so I'm going to pour the rest of it into those. Okay, now um, it's starting to set up, but what you saw is I took the two um, corks and I gently picked them up and moved them before that all the resin really sets. And I picked this third one up just so you see what I mean. So it looks like caramel, but I'm going to set it off to the side there so all that excess doesn't dry at the end of my cork. Um, I think if I would do this again, I wouldn't, um, when I dip the cork into the um, casting resin, I would shake it off or let the extra drip um, out into the um, cup before I would actually set it on the uh, plastic. But either way, before it really sets up uh, in a minute or so, um, you could still have time to move them away from the um, puddle that they're in. So we're just going to wait a few minutes now and maybe come back in 10 minutes uh, to see how this is dried onto the corks and what it looks like. Um, remember I'm going for kind of a light and natural um, just a little bit of honey or wax look to these corks. Hi we're back. Everything looks to have dried. It's no longer sticky. I think I'm going to pull these off which came right off the plastic easy and take a look. This is the cork one. It's a little bit lighter because it's competing with the actual cork texture, but I really like how that turned out with all the drippies. And there's a little bit of a lip of the resin on the bottom, but that's cool because it outlines the cork, I think. And then pick the rubber one up. It's a little darker, I think, on the rubber surface it looks or appears darker and again you have a little bit of a pulling at the bottom that made a little bit of a rim that's fine and here's the other one and that's even a little bit darker yet very very cool and I want to apologize oh, I have all your attention for all the ums and the ahs in the last couple of videos I played them back and thought oh my gosh 
you don't hear yourself usually when you're talking through things and um, I've not done the repeats of these it's just kind of straight through so apologies for that but I want to also thank a friend of mine who does some cork jewelry one cork jewelry and I met Terry Fryer a while back at an art retreat and she made me this beautiful necklace and gave it to me in the summer it doesn't use the amazing casting products which I wanted to bring to this project because I think it's very cool but um, I'll bring Terry's and lay it beside these when I finish um, it's, ju it's just a gorgeous piece and it's inspirational to me I wanted to thank her and I want to also uh, show you what the bling looks like Thank you.